wonderful trip to Kentucky, and then we came home, and I sat on the porch, and I went, achoo, achoo, so spring is here. Now, Cutting Grass Bill, you knew spring was here, didn't oh, you? Oh, yeah. Yay. Yeah, I love it. It is such it. a beautiful day, and tomorrow it's going to be 85 degrees. Do you understand the concept of 85? Sweat. Lots of sweat. Mm -hmm. It's going to be Depends hot. Depends on how busy and active you are. That's I mean, if you're right. just sitting in it, it's not too bad. No, now, I don't know, if you're Bill. sitting in 95, that's another story. Well, 85 is going to be hot. Now, we can say this weekend we both chilled. We both had a great weekend. We weren't still very long. I think you were still a little bit. You sat through some concerts up in Pigeon Forge. Oh, yeah. I saw, saw all kinds of music this weekend and uh, gospel music, old rock and roll. Saw Elvis, saw Michael Jackson, saw Ray yeah, Charles. I thought they were both dead. Well, <laughs> you know, the. Uh, you know. Uh huh. Yes. Anyway, but yeah, Got we saw and rode roller coasters and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, had a lot of fun. Now, did you know that when we got on 136 headed up to Kentucky, for miles and miles and miles and miles. We followed a white Chevrolet truck. And Freddie said, man, the exhaust on that sounds really good. That's got really good exhaust on it. We're listening to it, we're listening to it. Well, we get up into Tennessee, way up into Tennessee, and Miss Leah Sinyard turns around and says, hey, Miss Sherry, hey, Freddie. <laughs> we said, oh, where are you going? She was going to Pigeon Forge. We were going to Kentucky. Yep. That was pretty cool. We followed her from nearly Talking Rock, Georgia. Wow. So that was, it was yeah, funny. She, she called and asked, were you going to Pigeon Forge? I said, I don't think she's following me this weekend. No, no, no. We went to Kentucky. Today's program is based on um, a lady from Kentucky that I absolutely adore. Her name is Loretta Lynn. I have always, could have fooled me. I've always heard about and had people talk about and had Butcher Holler described to me, but until you have been to Butcher Holler, Kentucky, you can't appreciate what Doolittle Lynn did for Loretta. And I know you're not a big Loretta Lynn fan, but I'm going to tell you something. That man rescued her. We went through um, the Cumberland Tunnel, which is Tennessee, Kentucky, Virginia. You're right there. It's kind of like Copper Hill, McKaysville, you know, that same area. Yeah. It, is, it is all right there together. The, the economy there is really, really struggling, really, really hurting. During good times, the coal miners, that's how they make a living, coal mining. So during good times, things aren't like we've seen them. And if you think you want to ground your family, if you think you want to get them on a reality check, take them to Eastern Kentucky. It is a very sad time. It is a very, um, but I will tell you the one thing that's alive and well in Kentucky, in Middlesbrough, Kentucky, they are great at drag racing all night long because the only nice, nice hotel is on the main drag. And the main drag, do you hear the, what I said? The main drag at 3 a.m., it becomes the main drag. And the kids were drag racing all night long. I couldn't tell who won, but I could tell they raced all night long. Is that a nice hotel called the Dew Drop Inn? No, it was the Dew Drop Out. It, it was it was okay. It was okay. It was okay, and uh, it was um, inexpensive. So <laughs> that's where we're gonna leave it. <laughs> that's where we're gonna leave. Not where you it was say not that. the Hilton. No, but it was a very nice town, and I have learned so much about. Um, don't be judgmental. You know, yeah. here in, in the area we live in, and I know a lot of y'all were for zoning, and I know a lot of you wanted to, oh, you have to have an acre and a half, you have to have two acres, you have to have this, you have to have that. Everybody wanted zoning. Some people wanted zoning. Some people didn't want zoning. I've been to eastern Kentucky where one acre will house um, several homes, um, very close together, like 10 feet apart, um, several mobile homes. It's a very different lifestyle. I now appreciate my life more than I ever have. It was something I had looked forward to forever and ever and ever, and um, I've done it now. I've been inside, and we're gonna show some photos today. Today's program is designed around somebody's birthday. Not me. Somebody's birthday. On Facebook, there's this thing called BFF, Best Friends Forever. Well, at my house, it's called Before Freddie came. <laughs> so, you know, Wait a minute. BFF. That, B for Freddie. There you go. Where does the cane come in? You're missing a C. There. He has.
has grounded my life, changed my life, taken me places I've always wanted to see and never had an opportunity to go. I thought it meant best food fight. No, no. Oh, that's a good one, too. Yeah. But it does, um, this year, my life has changed drastically because I no longer, I'm not the big do everything for everybody and make sure everybody else is happy, get everybody tickets to this, take everybody here, take everybody there. I'm kind of grounding myself. And he has been a big force in that. So today's program, it is his birthday. So today's program is based on his birthday. The thing he loves most of all is um, Coal Miner's Daughter. So I've chosen some things. If you don't know about Loretta Lynn and the life she would have had, Doolittle truly did rescue her because now I have been to the coal mines of Kentucky. I have seen what they, um, the best of what they have. I've seen the worst of what they have. We're going to share an interview with y'all today that is of Loretta Lynn and her director. Okay, okay. Um, we're not going to be able to show that interview, and I'll explain it to you in a little bit. But I'm going to tell you what's on the interview. She talks about um, the idea that if Doolittle Lynn had not come into her life, she might have been maybe a nobody you know is that his real name Doolittle? no his name is mooney but his name is something else and somebody I I might call, yeah, yeah but, but i can't remember the other name but he does have another name mooney Lynn. but but in this interview she talks about the fact that yeah at, at 13 years old she met him at 14 years old she married him but if you've watched the movie coal miner's daughter you understand that he was the drive behind her i thought they only did that in alabama no, no, they, they did it in Eastern Kentucky, probably a lot. But um, their lifestyle... 14, eh? 14 years old. 14 years old. By the time she was 18, I believe by the time she was 18 and a half, she had four children. Um, a lot of kids came along quickly. In Coal Miner's Daughter, you learn a little bit about their lifestyle. Until you walk into their house, and we're going to share some photos with you of that house, you really don't know what their lifestyle was. You will see the stove her mama cooked on. You will see the chair her mama rocked in, and her mama rocked those babies a lot. And Loretta rocked the babies and sang to them a lot. You will get to see the washing machine that her mama washed a whole lot of clothes in. Now, I'm going to tell you something, ladies. It is not a Maytag top, side loading, top loading, or any other kind of loading. It is a loaded with a bucket kind of washing Probably machine. Probably the kind that makes your knuckles bleed a little oh, bit. Oh, absolutely. Their lifestyle would have been so different had Doolittle Lynn not walked into her now life. How much older is Doolittle than Loretta? I don't know, but he's gone. He's gone on to be with the Lord. And, um, well, as long as he wasn't like 30 something. 10 or 15 14, years yeah. old. No, 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 no. Ten, uh, he, he had just gotten back from the Army. But um, he was the force that changed her. He inspired her. He pushed her. He was a little bit shovey. He, um, you know, would get on her case at times. But he made a difference in her life. And I think if you haven't watched Coal Miner's Daughter lately, I would watch it again. We watched it again before we made this trip. We also went to a little town called Blackie, Kentucky. Now, let me tell you about Blackie, Kentucky. If you remember the movie when Doolittle threw Loretta out because she couldn't cook, she couldn't do anything right, so Doolittle sends her back home. Well, then Loretta goes down into Blackie, Kentucky to visit the doctor to find out she's expecting their first child. When she walks out of the doctor's office, we have photos of that building and of the church when Doolittle is coming down the hill in his Jeep and the blonde is waving at him and, hey, Doolittle, and then here comes Loretta with a big stick and Loretta takes the stick and goes, <gasps> something calls her a really bad name, but I'm not gonna call her that name, but, but the whole thing is done in Blackie, Kentucky. Well, when you watch the story about Loretta and Blackie, Kentucky, and you listen to the director, in Blackie, Kentucky, they pulled guns on them. They wouldn't let them come in there to shoot the movie. They did not want the coal miners to be exploited, and that's the way they looked at the making of Coal Miner's Daughter. Sounds like some of those things they have on afternoon TV called like As the World Turns <laughs> or The Young and the yeah, Stupid. Yeah, yeah. No, like well, can you imagine a director One from England? Movies, yeah, yeah a, a director from England comes to Eastern Kentucky, which is to be honest with you, a culture shock anyway. And then he comes to a town where people, instead of saying, oh, we're so glad you're here to make this movie, they pulled guns on him and said, we don't want you here. We do not want this. We don't want our community exploited. They thought it was a revenue or what it was. Yeah, maybe that's what it was. But we have been to Blackie, Kentucky. I can tell you Blackie, Kentucky consists of very little. It is a long, long trip down a winding road, and it, it's on GPS. This is funny. 
it's on GPS, but as you're going down GPS and you're looking at the numbers and it's telling you where to go and you're thinking, did it really mean for me to go down this pig trail? It really did, because we went down some pig trails to get to Blackie, Kentucky. If you haven't done a trip to Eastern Kentucky, I'm gonna recommend that you do one. It is, um, we left here, we followed Leah up 411. We went 411 to somewhere that took us to Sweetwater, Tennessee, and then we mm -hmm. picked up 75. Yeah. What road is that? I don't know, but it goes right by the Lost Sea. Yeah, that's exactly where yeah. we went. That's exactly where we went. I'm surprised that you said you went down the Piggy Trail. It's Easter, you're supposed to went down the Bunny Trail. Well, I know it was Easter, but we went down the Piggy Trail. Here but comes Peter Cottontail. That's Go right. That's yeah, right. Yeah, that's another story. But when you do this trip, do the way we did it. We took back roads. We did interstate very little because in order to learn about Eastern Kentucky, you've got to do it on the back roads. Now in that same county, that, since they've got a blacky Kentucky, do they have a whitey Kentucky? No, but they have a Whitesburg Kentucky. White, okay. A Whitesburg it, Kentucky. How about a brownie Kentucky? I don't know, I'll have to look. Orangeburg Kentucky. Maybe, maybe. Pink, pink Kentucky. During right. this trip, we learned two things. Gas is higher in Kentucky and the traffic wasn't bad. They got now, gas in Kentucky? Yeah, just a whole lot and it's expensive. In Pigeon Forge, was traffic crazy because of Easter? It was uh, not too bad, actually. I thought it'd be worse than it was. Uh, most people were there to see Elvis, of course. You know what I would say this is a sign of? The economy has not recovered. But you know, I talked to my son-in-law. He said their restaurant is up a lot over the first three months this year. Really? He said they're expecting the best year they've had in a long time. Wow. So, good news. Who knows? Good news. Well, we need some good news. Because after coming from Kentucky, and for you folks who like yard sales, <laughs> let, oh, me tell you, let me tell you about Kentucky. Good grief. A yard sale in Kentucky means that you just go in the house and you gather up whatever you want to sell and you lay a, a bedspread over the hood of your car. I'm serious. And you just put the stuff on the hood of your car. It's all over Kentucky. I mean, we, we pulled in one place. We're just going down the road and I said, man, what's going on over there? All those cars, what's up? Well, people had pulled in, parked their cars, put stuff on the hood of their car. Yard sales are alive and well in Kentucky. How about the ones from here to Tennessee? There was tons of them there too. Absolutely, Bunches. absolutely. So it, uh, we're going to show some photos now. Now this is Blackie, Kentucky. This is Butcher Holler, Kentucky. This is the place that Loretta Lynn, oh now this is coming out of there. This is once we got over to Western Kentucky and we started seeing some civilization again. That was a castle that we just passed. This is Loretta Lynn, the sign that goes to Loretta Lynn's home place. And this is the store. Now this is where you have to stop. This is her brother Herman Webb's store. It is a family-owned store that has been in business forever and ever and ever. And he did some we, remodeling recently. It oh, like. well, now just lay down on your bed, y'all, and you can see this picture. But, <laughs> <laughs> but this is Webb's Grocery. Loretta was a Webb. Her brother Herman ran the store until several years ago. His daughter now runs the store. And if you remember in the movie, do little um, liked bologna sandwiches and got Loretta Lynn in a whole lot of trouble did, on the radio. Did Loretta have a sister named Charlotte? No, no, not Charlotte's Web. Oh. But she got her in a whole lot of trouble when she said something on the radio. She shouldn't have said about bologna. You will see in just a minute her niece slicing bologna because a customer came in while we were in this store and he wanted a bunch of bologna. There she is, slicing the bologna. That's Loretta's niece. That is Herman Webb's daughter, and it was so funny because I said, I know you think I'm stupid. Could I please have a shot of you slicing that bologna? And she said, excuse me? <laughs> there you go. But you, if you go to Butcher Holler, you have to stop at Webb's store. This has all kinds of memorabilia. Now, there's the sign that gets you to Butcher Holler. Gee. Now, that's a nice sign. And there's Mr. Brackett standing sideways on the porch leading into Loretta's home. He's got talent. There's the front door to Loretta's home. This is where she was raised. This is where her family grew up. This is actually the house. This is the bed that when poor Doolittle was trying to get permission to marry Loretta, he had to go in there to the bed and talk to both mom and dad and finally got it done. This house is, uh, I can imagine, very cold in the winter and very hot in the summer. There's graffiti all over the walls because as people began coming to see the house, they would leave their name and information on it. They've now asked that you don't do that anymore. Imagine they have that. a book to register. So, um, but this is the house. Now imagine all the kids, that's Loretta's brother, you mean there's not Herman a Webb. You mean there's not a thing on there that says Sherry and Freddie was here? Nope. Look at that stove. Look at that <laughs> stove and look at the steel sitting behind the stove. Uh, that's why the people run you off up there. They don't yeah, want to mess with the steel. Yeah, that's exactly right. 
That is Loretta's mom's washing machine. Now, ladies, when you fuss and grout because you need a new washing machine, just think about Loretta and her washing machine. That's the only bedroom downstairs, and the other children slept upstairs. There was a front room that had mom and dad's bed in it, and then another room that had that bed in it, and everybody else slept upstairs. Did you so. cry a little bit when you walked No, in? no, Got but I want you to see something. Um, we're going to go, and we're going to see the floor when you enter the door and you think about how many how many memories have been created by the people who walked across the threshold of Loretta Lynn's home. There's Mooney. And, um, you know, Crystal Gale is her sister. This is where Crystal Gale was born. Crystal Gale is one of those um, totally different entertainer than her sister, but she's made a mark in country music for herself. That's the swing that mom and dad were sitting in when Doolittle ran out the first time to ask could he take Loretta's hand in marriage? And they said, no, but they eventually gave in. Now, right there is where the hog trough was that Doolittle fell into in the movie. That is Butcher Holler, Kentucky. And it is, it is well worth the trip. You know, it's one of those things. It took us several hours to get there. I can tell you we've got about a, th there's the threshold. Now, look at the threshold. That is what Loretta Lynn walked across every day of her life and her family. And today, folks come from everywhere to see this old home place. It is just as it was when she grew up there. And uh, no running water, got to tell you that. You know, there's a little outhouse, and uh, it is totally different than anything we expect. And I sure wish that picture was up on its side, because it's a good one. It's like watching <coughs> Batman. Yeah, <laughs> it is, isn't it? But anyway, if you have nothing planned for a weekend, I suggest you leave on Friday afternoon about 3 and you drive up to Middlesboro, Kentucky, and um, there's a famous family from Ella J who is from that town, and uh, they sing here on ETC quite often, and I bet y'all can guess who it is. It's not, uh, it's not Bill Senior in First Mountain City, but no. it's somebody else. Now, this is the museum in Van Leer, Kentucky. Van Leer is the town where Butcher Holler is located, and they, this is a haunted museum. It and they tell like you, if you come at night, bring your flashlight with extra batteries because the ghost will drain your flashlights immediately. I thought it was because you were there. No, 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 no. <laughs> but there's a tribute to the miners, and um, this is a very close-knit, very quiet, very different community. And, and when you see the movie Butcher Holler, um, when you're watching Coal Miner's Daughter and you approach Butcher Holler and, and her brothers yell and say, stranger coming when you go to butcher holler be prepared because they really don't like strangers you might get rock salt in your hand kind of kind of interesting yeah. now i think these photos and we as, as we left there we went up into the next town which is where naomi judd is from and uh do you know where that town might be uh no ashland really. kentucky I've ashland kentucky and then the next town might be where Billy Ray Cyrus is You think from. I keep up with country music? <laughs> you should. But you know, I will tell you this. It what? reminds me of this weekend. We went to, of course, Dollywood, and Dolly Parton has a, a little home inside Dollywood that right. shows her exactly. growing up place. Were her startings that poor? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Really? And uh, wow. she's actually, the coat of many colors, she's mm -hmm. saying, she, the coat is actually in the museum. Uh -huh. You can actually see it. Well, that's the thing I was going to tell you. It, so if, you if you are a true Loretta Lynn fan, I've been to Hurricane Mill several times. I've seen her lavish lifestyle now. I know what she has now. I know all the money she's made. It really helped me to go back to where she started because truly without Doolittle Lynn saving her, um, it would be a totally different story. There wouldn't be a big mansion on the hill. You know, like it or not, like them or not, it's an American story. Mm -hmm. uh, her, Dolly Part, whoever it might be that can oh, yeah. come from rags to riches and oh, absolutely. only in America. Yeah. yeah. And and it's like Dolly, Loretta wrote her first song. Dolly wrote her first yeah. song. You know, if they hadn't gotten that God given talent, they could not have survived what they did because sure. they could have still been sitting can you imagine Dolly Parton sitting on the porch in that little house she was raised in? Mm. Probably yeah. not, no. Now, we're going to show some photos of Blackie, Kentucky. This is the town where people did not welcome the producers for the movie. They shot out their tires. They Now, that's actually up in Cleveland, Georgia, but that's a good, that's a good shot. That is near where... Um, What's the same to me. What is the group? Um, from up, he just won the Grammy. Ooh! 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 He's from Cleveland, Georgia, the Lana, Georgia. Music? Yes. I wouldn't know that. Oh, gosh. Oh, I'm going to kick myself. I'll think of it in a minute. Oh, my Lord have mercy. Uh, it's his name. His name is somebody, Zach Brown Band. Yay! Stuff at the TV. Okay, now that's Blackie, Kentucky, and that's where they ran the folks off. They shot out tires when they 
they didn't want people there filming a movie and uh, the town is just as you see it today that is the way it was during the movie the house that Loretta and Dew are in is missing there's the office where Loretta went to the doctor to find out she was expecting Doolittle's first little child so that is just like it is today and the movie was done in 1979, so things haven't changed much in Blackie, Kentucky. Done some so remodeling, have they? We didn't, I don't think we showed the church, but when you see, when Doolittle's coming down the hill in that Jeep, that is a big scene in the movie because that's when you see, you finally see Loretta leave being that little child from Kentucky and become that mean woman who is, you ain't woman enough to take my man. She gets a stick out after that girl. Do I need to watch this movie? <laughs> Yes, and I'll give, no, I can't give you that no, copy. No, I don't want yours, but I haven't watched <laughs> I want this movie you to watch before. this movie because it will, uh, Sissy Spacek won an Academy Award for this. I totally disagree with the fact that Tommy Lee Jones did not get an Academy Award. Do I have to listen to the music when I'm watching it? You do, it? you do. But, but let me tell you something else about the movie. Beverly D'Angelo does the soundtracks of Patsy Cline. Beverly Aces does? it does a great I job. I know she sang that well. She does a great job. And Loretta Lynn they let Sissy do the music to that, and, and she aced it. It was absolutely great. So, country music fan or not, I suggest now, you watch Coleman's That's a good trivia daughter. question for our folks. What else did Beverly D'Angelo star in? That's exactly right. That would be a good trivia question. What could we give away? Give me your wig today. <laughs> I could give you away. <laughs> well, you oh, know. Oh, I'll find, figure something out. Give me we'll give something away. Here. Today is Freddie Brackett's birthday, and today's oh. program was designed around Freddie Brackett's birthday. I brought two guests in, I thought and thought and thought, and I thought if I was going to bring somebody that would make Freddie Brackett smile, that would give him kind of a positive day, Thank you. and let him know how much we love him, um, I would bring, yeah, who would I bring? Oh, you're not talking about me then. No, Travis and Alicia Bridgman. Oh. <laughs> Travis and Alicia are with us today. They are going to be joining us in just a minute. We're going to take a break, and we're going to go to our sponsors, and then when we come back, you're going to get to see, meet, and spend a little more time with Travis and Alicia. They're going to sing for us. When we travel, quite often we have their CDs in. Now this weekend we listened to Angel Good Spirit. Stuff. We listened to Angel Spirit. We listened to Earl Thomas Conley. And we listened to the Bridgmans over and over. And I kept trying to say, <gasps> Freddie, what's your favorite song? What's your favorite song? Because I wanted them to do his favorite song. He said, I like a lot of them. And I said, I never did find out what his favorite help. song is. But when we come back, you're going to get to meet the Bridgmans. We're going to talk to them a little bit. And then we're going to let them sing. This is my tribute to somebody who has totally turned my life around. He made me positive. He made me grounded. He made me focused. And I am now a much cooler, calmer. Am I easier to get along with? Just, just tell them the truth. You like him. Right? I'm easier to get along yeah. with because of him. I promise you that. <laughs> right now, we're going to take a break. We're going to go to our sponsors and to Rich Scott and Trading Time. And remember, Trading Time follows us every day, Monday through Friday. Don't forget, clean out your closet, spring cleaning, and sell that stuff on Trading Time. We'll be right back. We're back. Guess what? Happy birthday to Freddie Brackett. Happy I didn't know. Birthday, Freddie. Freddie. Yeah. I didn't know, you, you know. I thought, well, what could I get him? What could I do for him? What could I, you know, what could I do for that man who's such a nice guy? And I thought, well, the best gift of all would be to have the two of you here. So you're here to celebrate his birthday. We're honored. Thank and you, Sherry. I did. And he's not here to enjoy it. He's not. He's, he's in the <laughs> recliner watching. I did try to find out his favorite song. I couldn't. He just wouldn't open up. I kept saying, he said, I like a lot of them. And I said, well, name one you really like. <laughs> he never did. So what are y'all going to sing today? Well, I thought we'd sing I'm Glad. Mm -hmm. And You said something about Canaan Land? We're going to try a trio. I understand okay. that's Freddie's favorite song. We're <laughs> going to try a trio just on the spur of the moment. Okay, it's, uh, okay. Kind of a uh, put it together on uh, Canaan Lands Just in Sight. Uh -huh. We're going to try that at the piano. Now, I ask y'all, had you ever been to the part of Kentucky we spent this weekend in? You tell me you have a family or, or past, somebody here at the church? We do. We okay. have um, a mother and her adult daughter and son in law and their two children. Okay. And then since then, his mother has moved down and uh, his sister. So they came to Georgia because there was no work for them in Kentucky, and mm -hmm. they just couldn't make a living. Yeah, it is. I, I really don't know how to describe it and give it and do it justice because <clears throat> it is a very. You can tell it's very close, you know, because the way the families and truly one acre of land, there would be like four residences on one acre of land, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> whether it be a small mobile home, then a larger mobile home, and then maybe a small house. You can tell everybody's trying to bond together to try to make it work. 
And, and I think we could all learn from going there. Now, what have you talked to this lady a lot who's in your church, and does she share stories with you about Kentucky? Well, just that um, there was a documentary on about the area they lived from, and she wanted us to watch that and see. Uh -huh. And it showed the poverty conditions, but they just, if you didn't work in the mines, you pretty well didn't work, is what she said. Did she tell you what a miner might make for a week's salary? Because I just wonder I what know. kind of money they do make. I don't know. Well, the one thing that I saw that you might do as an opportunity in Kentucky, the miners have to have trucks to transport some of the coal mm -hmm. and some of the gravel they use trucks for, but most everything was done by train. Mm -hmm. And we learned that it is totally union. I mean, Eastern Kentucky, you got to belong to a union, you know, because there are lots and lots of unions there. But um, trains, you know, I've never seen such long trains for miles and miles and miles, just train loads full of coal. So I guess that's how they transport it. Probably. But what else would you do for a living? You know, we, we found in, in miles and miles and miles of travel, a Walmart, a Walmart, you know, finally, a Walmart. Mm -hmm. And then occasionally, we would find a little town that might have like a little grocery store and a little hardware store and a little something, but not much of anything. And I said, what do they do for groceries? What do they do for, I, I just. It's called a farm. <laughs> I think a lot of them do, maybe raise, yeah. I don't know. What did we do before we had all this? That's right, right. That that's now. right. Yeah. But, yeah. but I think a trip to Eastern Kentucky would be on the agenda for everybody. Humbling. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. And now y'all came from Forsyth County, which used to be, in my opinion, Eastern <laughs> Kentucky. I mean, seriously, <laughs> Forsyth mm -hmm. County was country. Hi. It was very, very rural. A lot of people lived in mobile homes on top of mobile homes. Maybe mom and dad had a house, and then one of the kids got married, and they put a trailer out there in the yard. And that's the way Forsyth County was. Right. Today, describe Forsyth County. Um, progressive, um, just just busting at the seams. It is. Um, just has really lost a lot of its, uh, you know, uh, character that it's had over the years. Right. You know, it's, it's I'll been, tell you, yeah. it's it's either subdivisions or commercial. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You know, right. there's no really acreage <coughs> where people live on acres of land anymore unless right. they've had it in their family for years. Uh -huh. I was telling Sherry, uh, I read, I think it was Forbes magazine a couple weeks ago, they did a survey of the top 20 uh, counties in the United States that has the highest incomes per capita. Forsyth County was like number 19 um, in the whole United right, States with about right. 83,000 uh, income per household average. Per capita, right. Uh -huh. That lake, you know, yeah. from, yeah. from Lake Lanier. Definitely changed. A lot of, uh, well, the thing class. that changed Forsyth County is your proximity to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Now, Eastern Kentucky, 400. yeah. Georgia 400. Yeah. Georgia 400 yeah. made Absolutely. it easy to live in Forsyth County and work in Atlanta. So That's like right. 15 is, yeah. is increasing the growth up in this area mm -hmm. in the same way. Well, Eastern Kentucky doesn't have the opportunity to do that because until, I think it was 19, either 1996 or 1998, the Cumberland Tunnel opened. Have y'all ever been, have you ever been there? Okay, the mm -hmm. tunnel is almost a mile long underground mm -hmm. under a mountain. Mm -hmm. And you don't even think about, you are at the border of Virginia, Kentucky, and Tennessee as you go into this tunnel. Before 1996 or 98, whenever they built this tunnel, how did people get there? Because you can't get there from here. You know that <laughs> joke? Right. You can't get there from here. You couldn't get there from here. The Partons who sing here on ETC quite often are from Middlesbrough, Kentucky. And I, I wish I had asked Jeff. I called him as we were approaching that town, and I said, guess where we're spending the night? He said, where? I said, your hometown. He's like, you're kidding me. <laughs> and, and I said, no. And he said, well, wait till you see the tunnel. I was not prepared for this tunnel. It's almost a mile long underground um, under this huge mountain. And when you come out, this sign says Virginia, this sign says Tennessee, and this sign says Kentucky. And you're right on the border of those three states. Mm. So there's nothing in that area like there's no Atlanta, there's no Birmingham, there's no Greenville, there's no big town to make anything there blossom. So it's just, I'd say it's going to stay like it is. It's going to stay like it is. But um, something wrong with that? No, no, no. And I think everybody needs to make a trip right. there. And I think it will. I think y'all go slower than we went. Not slower speed wise, but slower take your time. Mm -hmm. Because we had a mission, and we, you know, we had it all documented, and the itinerary was set out, and da 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 da. da. Um, 
take your time and go spend about three days in eastern Kentucky because if that won't change the way you look at today's world, you know, when you think we're getting down and out or, yeah, take a trip there. Take a trip there. It's very different, very different. Now, this year, you've seen some things happen with your church. You have Haitian, you have some Haitian members. Yes. You have members from Kentucky. Anybody else coming in there? Is anybody else moving to the area? Have you seen some we, changes? We had some more Haitian visitors yesterday. And I just Did they give speak the English? Uh, yes, uh, um, you have to listen closely, you know, <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> that's, that's good. But I uh, just want to give the Lord a praise. The last two Sundays we've had souls saved in each service. Good. So we can thank God for that. Good. And uh, just a wonderful <laughs> time yesterday. And Miss Alicia, did you stress a little bit yesterday, a little problem with some audio? Yes. <laughs> yes. Welcome to the audio world. That's sometimes right. it's perfect and sometimes it's not, but, mm. but probably nobody but you even noticed it. I think they noticed uh, yeah. it. <laughs> I think everybody noticed it. Yeah. You do? <laughs> I think they noticed it. And, you know, you want Easter Sunday to be very special. So, right. Um, that's why I hated it. But it worked out. We had a wonderful service. Good. What did y'all sing? Tell me the <coughs> songs you sang yesterday. Well, Trav Travis and I sung It Is Finished for um, a duet. Mm hmm. You want to, the choir song was... What does the congregation oh, sing at well, your church on Easter? Well, we opened up with, um, We Will See Jesus. Okay, love that, mm -hmm. yeah. We just had that, but then our, our youth had a large part in the program. They had a little skit they did and, and sang What a Day That Will Be. Uh -huh. She's looking for a particular song. I'm looking for, yeah. you oh, still okay. haven't okay. said it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we yeah, sung that. We, we, we did sing Christ, Christ Arose. Arose. Yeah. We sung that at, at our sunrise service and our morning okay. service, right? Okay. And he lives. Well, we didn't he do lives. Lives. Cross, You did? But we did do. No. I, didn't, I didn't think of that. We Four verses of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you we know. We did do Christ Arose. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, one, this is so funny. A, a few years ago, I'm sitting in church and I sat dead on center where Matt Dibler was preaching. His wife and his children and I sat right in front of him. So we're sitting there and we get through the whole Easter service and he steps down to walk down to shake hands and he's thinking, she's going to nail me because we did not do all rugged yeah. cross. <laughs> and I nailed yeah. him. I well, said, we do say I no drove rugged 90 cross. miles to hear you preach and you didn't even do all rugged cross. Yeah. yeah. We, mm. we do sing the old rugged cross from time to time, but we didn't yesterday. That's a song everybody ought to sing. And Love Lifted Me. Love Lifted that Me, that's right. right, that's right. Now, when we were at your church last time, uh, Zeke was there, and what's his name, Clark? Keesler. Clark Keesler was there. Have y'all been back over there to sing with them a little bit over in, is it Athens? Uh, Nicholson. Nicholson, yeah. They have that every Thursday night at the uh, Beecham's uh, Gospel Valley Music Hall. Have y'all been Nicholson. back over there? No, we're scheduled to go, I um, believe, is it this month, I believe. In April, I believe the end, month. toward the end, toward of, the end April. of April. We'll Can you tell people night. how to get there? Because it's not a long trip from here. Um, 85 <laughs> North, um, like the, to the outlet malls at Commerce, uh -huh. and then turn right on 441. What is it, about 15 miles, I said? And it's on the right. You have to watch real closely because it's right off the road. It sits down, and it's hard to see. It's easy to miss. <clears throat> so... Um, uh, it's about 15 miles from Commerce on 441. And how does he find groups? Because I'm, I'm bringing some of the groups from there on here. And um, Zeke and Clark, we, they said they would set up something coming the same morning. How do people find that place? And how did he start doing that? Well, about two years, I think. He said he's been having it every Thursday night. Um, they just started a meeting there at that, uh, was in like an auction barn or like they call the chicken house <coughs> right. kind of converted chicken house uh -huh. and it's been a number of things but uh just started calling groups and they've had some top groups they've had naomi and the seagulls there before uh -huh. and uh uh who else let's see just just all the all the local in there i mean be surprised uh -huh. there's a lot of local groups and you can keep something like that um uh, we have several uh, places in the north georgia that have singings every week sometimes uh -huh. three groups at a time right so but How do people find out about them? Because if I hadn't been at your church that night, I would never have even heard of that. And there's some good talent over there. Well, Clark Clark has sung for years. Right. And his dad and before him. And he does. Him. If I were going to describe his <coughs> singing, I would say western gospel. Is that pretty? Mm -hmm. Con yeah. Country Con western Con gospel? Maybe country yeah. mixes gospel. Yeah. Country gospel, I guess. He sung at one time with the Roy Knight singers. Okay. So he's a very talented man. And, um, but when he first started it, he talked to the um, announcers on WCON 
and just said <laughs> we want to start radio station in the it's northeast Georgia. It's a powerful Georgia. influence. Yeah, absolutely, it really is. You can get the word out mm -hmm. through WCON. But he um, called the radio station and said, "I'm going to start up a singing. We're going to try it out on Thursday nights. If anybody wants to sing, you know, call me." Uh -huh. And we heard him, and we called him, uh -huh. and other people did too. So at first, he had to ask people. But word has got out now, and now right. people call him. Right. And he has That's a problem, right. you know, now getting enough time to have people right. that call him That's awesome. a time to sing. That's awesome. And what he does is it's uh, mostly a local crowd that come every Thursday night. They're very faithful. Uh -huh. And it packs out. It, it was a chicken house, so uh -huh. it's just a little long building and very informal. If you go to be impressed by the surroundings, <laughs> you'll be disappointed. But if you go to love the music, you'll hear good right. music. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And um, the the Beechams are people who have had a store and a restaurant there for a long time. Uh -huh. And they love gospel music, and they let Clark start that in the building beside the store. Wow, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, I yeah. know we enjoyed the groups that were with y'all that uh -huh. night. Now, what's Zeke's last name? Uh, Zeke Turner. Turner. Zeke Turner, Turner right. mm -hmm. no relation to Ike. <laughs> and not Ike's temperament, but he's going to come and be on. And last night we were watching ETC, and Freddie said, I told you he was on Singing in the Mountains. He was on Singing in the Mountains, and that's funny because I've watched Singing in the Mountains a hundred times and never paid attention to Zeke, but he does a little bit different style. It's a little black gospel soul. Mm -hmm. He gets into it. What does he call it? He says, I'm going to zeke -nize this song. Zeke -nize. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. He totally changes it. So. Well, we're going to take a break right now, and we're going to go to one of my favorite programs. This is called Freddy Friday, and a lot of you have been texting me, emailing me, telling me you like when he's here. We are opposites. I'm the mouth, and he's the quiet. <laughs> I'm the get her done, and he's the write it down and get it focused kind of guy. We're going to go to um, a little bit of a show with Freddie, and while we set them up, you're going to sing with them. Now, this is something you had no idea you were going to have to do today, did you? But no. you don't care. You can sing with them. It's anybody. one of those deals like you hear in church. Y'all pray for us. We ain't practice. <laughs> 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 in season out of season, right? We're going to let them go over to the piano and get tuned up because they are going to do. You are here today to celebrate Mr. Brackett's birthday. That's right. I thought about a cake and thought about candles, and I thought, and I thought, nah, I'll just bring the bridge with us. <laughs> and I didn't even have to wrap y'all. So. Well, we hope <laughs> he has awesome. a wonderful day. Yes. He will, really he do. will. Right now, we're going to go to just a little bit of a Freddy Friday. This is uh, my driver who has driven me many, many miles, my co-host, my buddy, um, somebody I love hanging out with and somebody that has brought a lot of grounding and focus to my life. And I want to say once again, happy birthday, Freddie Brackett. <laughs> and any time we have a need. Thank you, Mr. Freddie Brackett. Thank you for having me. <clears throat> it is going to be a fun day because a lady is here who has been a great influence in your life. Miss Marie Scott is here. She wrote some amazing music and plays the piano very, very well. Yes, she does. And we've been hanging out at her house a little bit, and you and she have a history of singing and playing together. Mm -hmm. So today, I am so thankful that Miss Marie has coerced you into singing a song, maybe? Well, not yet. I may <laughs> or may not sing today. You I'm never know. <laughs> We'll be thankful that he will. Um, Angela is going to be here. Charlene is going to drive her up here. We are very thankful that five days after major problems, um, she's going to be here for just a short time. She wants to say thank you, and I can't say thank you enough. I walked into the studio today, and gifts were sitting out there wrapped in pink and black. Now, very creative. Sugar, what color we got on today? Pink and black. Pink and black. In honor of every single person who has ever fought one second of a battle with cancer. And my shirt does look pink. <coughs> I think it that does. Was yes. Worried that it wouldn't show yes, up. Yes, it does. Somebody in your life has good taste. Yay. <laughs> we are we are talking about making women feel good about themselves, making them feel positive that they're they're battle ahead. People are supporting them and fighting with them. Fight like a girl. Angela will be here with Charlene. Nobody can make you feel good any better than Charlene can. She can make you bubble. She can make you laugh. She's going to drive Angie up here. And by the time they get here, they will probably both be in really good moods. 
Now, another reason Angela's coming today, just to say thank you to y'all, but it's because Dan Elliott's in the house. Admit it. You know, That's Angela why. would not yeah. miss a Dan Elliott day. If she had to come with a catheter and an IV pole, she would have come. And rolled in here on a <laughs> hospital bed. She would have come. It is about racing. Uh, one Friday a month, we really devote it to racing. Dan has been working himself to the bone to get a racetrack ready. Well, I know y'all noticed this little bit of rain we had. It's kind of put him a little bit behind on schedule, but I would bet he is going to get open on time. And Gresham Motor Sports Park will be an amazing event, an amazing venue, very close to our market. So it's gonna be a good drive for us and something we'll enjoy doing quite often in the motorhome. Yep. Absolutely. Maybe we'll see Nick over there racing. Maybe someday, someday. maybe someday. Uh, racing is a big part of our family, and uh, if you have race car drivers you like and you would like for us to talk about them, call and let us know because I'm learning who you like and who you don't like. I know a lot of you don't like Angela's number 18, the M&M car. I agree with you 100%. So <laughs> we're hearing from you. But give her a little mercy. She's oh, sick yeah. right now. That's so. right. So we're going we're gonna to let her eat M&Ms today. <laughs> Today is about being thankful. We are so thankful for the many friends, the cards, the letters, the people who stepped up we never expected. I walked in today and honestly, um, the studio was sitting there with gifts for us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No way could we thank you enough. And to my buddies up at Copper Hill United Methodist Church, they have been praying continually for Angela, as in many of you, from Turtle Town to Ball Ground. Thank you so much. And I have to say, I enjoyed my little visit to Ball Ground. You know, I told you I went by Dot's restaurant and talked to them. Now, that place has been there 42 years, but your grandparents, did they have a hotel next door to that for years? Yeah, my granddad did, and also my aunt, Mary, uh, Aunt Mary Brown had a five and 10 cent store that was kind of connected to the motel. Uh -huh. and, and when that, disappeared. Why did it disappear? Did, was there no longer a need for a hotel in downtown Ballroom? Well, actually, it was uh, a hotel for years by my understanding. This, of course, was way before my I've time. seen pictures of it. Yeah. yeah. And then after that, they kind of used it for apartments, you know, for people mm -hmm. who live there. Mom and Dad, they lived there when they had, uh, when Ronnie and Debbie was little. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe even Randy lived there, too. I don't remember, but um, I, I never did, but um, it's a, it was an old it building. Was a and actually, yeah. uh, actually, Dad's house is built partly out of the, the lum lumber. lumber out of mm -hmm. that motel, yeah. Well, we have to also say next week there's going to be Georgia Marble Festival is every the first weekend of October. This week I'm sponsoring a car. I always sponsor a car and I always buy a trophy. And this year I decided to choose two people to honor. Ronnie Brackett, your brother, who lost a battle with cancer, a short battle, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. And Angela, who is fighting a battle. So I decided I did a trophy with both their names on it. It is in honor of Angela and in memory of Ronnie, and I think that's important. I think every single family out there has been affected. Now, you took care of Ronnie until he passed away, and you took me on a road yesterday that you took Ronnie on quite often to ride. Tell me what the road is we went on, because y'all, I've been to Fannin County. I had never been to Fannin County till he took me on the back road yesterday. Where do we go? Well, it's Highway 60 from where 515, you know, you can turn left it to go to Mineral Bluff or you can turn right and go to Dahlonega. And we turned right like we were going to, to Dahlonega. And we went miles and miles out that way. And then we turned right on, what was the name of that road? Double Head Gap. Double Head Gap. And that's uh, where my Grandma Haynes' stepmom was born and raised, mm -hmm. and I wanted to go out through there. And then, of course, it comes out at Big Creek and close to RNA yes. Orchard. Yes, yes, and that's the point. When we get to, he took me so far over the river and through the woods, and he kept saying, you don't know where you are. I said, you are right, big boy. I do not have a clue where I am. And then we approached a major road, and you said, in a minute, you will understand where you are. And then I started recognizing some things. We went Fannin County and came back in in Gilmer County, and we ended up at RNA Orchards. And I have to say good morning to the precious children at RNA Orchards, Amanda, Jessica, Anna, and Jacob. I got to spend a little bit of time with two of them. 
And I'm going to tell you something. You talk about some good kids raised in a great family atmosphere. They get to be the fourth generation picking apples. Now, we have some apples here. We're going to encourage you. Go to r &A Orchards. They are right Okay. Up. We took that little break in order to let the trio, I guess we'll call them the fab ones, Fred Allen Brackett, happy, happy birthday to you. You're going to get to hear one of your favorite songs by one of your favorite groups, plus Bill Sinyard. So here we go. We're going to go. Travis, everybody knows it's great on the piano. Alicia is the most positive, sweet, kind person and couldn't think of anybody that Mr. Brackett would like to spend his birthday with any more than the Bridgmans. So here we go. Happy, happy birthday, Fred Allen Brackett. Here go the Bridgmans and Bill Senior, fab one. <laughs> Way to go. Okay. Happy birthday. Boy, that was the best birthday shopping I ever did. That was so simple. Now sit back and you're going to get to hear Travis and Alicia do several more songs minus Bill Senior. Bill's going to come back over and join me. Today is a special day. Um, the past year has been so much fun. I needed some fun in my life. I needed to get out and go and do places and see things I've never seen. And I've been given the opportunity thanks to Mr. Brackett's great driving ability. He likes to drive and I like to ride, so it works great. Right now, we do love to show up at Great Gospel Singings. We met Travis and Alicia because I happen to be at a Great Gospel Singing in Forsyth County. Right now, sit back, hit your DVR, and you're going to get a full-fledged mini Bridgman's concert. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. trials and tribulations I am not afraid I know he'll be there to guide me all the way though the road is sometimes rocky let there be no doubt I'll sail away home to be with Jesus in the cloud I'm glad so glad he gives sweet peace to me I'm glad so happy as I travel on the right road to glory, where I shall reach heaven, my home, I'm glad, so glad. That will be a wonderful
wonderful time when we see his blessed face. We'll praise his name throughout the endless days, glorifying Jesus with the ones who've gone before. We'll reign with him on the blessed heavenly shore. I'm glad, so glad he gives sweet peace to me. so happy as I travel on the bright road to glory, where I shall reach heaven, my home. I'm glad, so glad. I'm so happy as I travel on the bright road to glory, where I shall reach heaven, my home. I'm glad, so glad. I will keep him in perfect peace. His mind is stayed on me. Is my mind stayed on thee, Lord? Do I find sweet peace from you? Or do I look to those who have no power for strength to see me through? Do I turn to you? In times of need or to a world that has no hope do I call your name when I'm in pain for the courage I need to call teach me to lean on you Lord when the world me, Lord, to live for Thee. I want to live for you, Lord, an example to the lost, to know your word, to stand for you, no matter what the cost. Teach me, Lord, to be a warrior in a time of compromise let others see your strength in me teach me lord to touch their lives teach me to lean on you lord when the world is going wrong teach me to know me, Lord, to live for Thee. You gave Your life that I might live. Teach me, Lord, to live for Thee. Just any day now, the Lord will return. Each time I stop and take the time to look around me, well, I see the signs of His appearing everywhere. The things He said would come to pass are now before us. And I strange excitement in the air just any day now our lord is coming he'll be returning for you and me for i've been watching Just 
I'll sing. Oh, there's a longing in my heart for his appearing. I'll gladly leave behind these trials here below. closer to my home just any day now our lord is coming he'll be returning for you and me for i've been watching and i've been waiting just any day now, His face I'll see. For I've been watching, and I've been waiting. Just any day now, His face I'll see. Just any day. Whoa, okay, we did it. Happy birthday. That was the easiest birthday shopping I have ever done, and I think everybody is happy that Freddie Brackett got that for his birthday. For months and months and months, we were saying, where is Dr. Kent? Well, we now know that Dr. Kent is across the street from Ella J. Tire and behind the Dollar General store. She is accepting patients from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Right now, let's go to her graphics. There you go. We're going to go to the community calendar. And when we come back, we're going to be joined once again by Travis and Alicia. We're going to share some photos with you. We've talked a lot about our travels, and I've encouraged you to please do day trips. Please do something. When you think about it, I've been a lot of places in the world, but I haven't been many places around home. In the past year, I've been given the opportunity between the motor home and, and Freddie driving me so many different places. I've seen so many things just around us that make such a difference, and I want to encourage each of you on a, a nice spring day, take somebody you love and go ride around and just do something. You and Melissa do that quite often. Yeah. You just take a down day, and it's very important that we do that. I think Travis and Alicia, their down day is coming over here. This is like a wonderful trip, so yay, <laughs> yay. Right now, we're going to go to our community calendar, and then when we come back, we're going to talk to them a little bit more and show some photos of some of the day trips we've done. Stream of time, we have not long to stay. The stormy clouds of darkness will turn to brightest day. Then let us all take courage, for we're not left alone. The life boat soon is coming to gather the Jews. Home. Then cheer, my brother, cheer, our trials will soon be o'er. Our loved ones we shall meet, shall meet upon the golden shore. We're pilgrims and we're strangers here, we're seeking the city to come. The lifeboat soon is coming to gather the jewels home. Sometimes the devil tempts me and says it's all in vain to try to live a Christian life and walk in Jesus' name. But then we hear the Master say, I'll lend you a helping hand. And if you'll only trust me, I'll guide you to that land. Now is the time to get on board while she is passing by. But if you stand and wait too long, you shall forever die. The fare is paid for one and all on board. There is no 
fear. Get ready, cries the captain. Oh, look, she's almost here. Think cheer, my brother, cheer. Our trials will soon be o'er. Our loved ones we shall meet, shall meet upon the golden shore. We're pilgrims and we're strangers here. We're seeking a city to come. The lifeboat soon is coming to gather the jewels home. Okay, now for my birthday, who we're going to invite? Who we're going to invite for my birthday? Elvis. Earl Thomas Conley. <laughs> Earl Thomas Conley. Y'all can come be with us. But okay. <laughs> Earl Thomas Conley. You know, I did think a lot about what could I do that would be really special for his birthday, and I thought, I don't know. This past year, he's opened my eyes to a lot of things I've never seen, and. Um, you know, I was going to a lot of gospel concerts. I was taking a lot of people, and then I just kind of quit, and I started slowing down and doing for me. That's something I'd never done. Mm -hmm. Do the two of you take time to do things together that you really need to revitalize your life together and just chill a little bit? Do y'all ever get time to do that? Everybody not, needs that. Not as often as yeah. we should. <laughs> mm -hmm. We do sometimes, uh -huh. but not as often as we should. That's it's one important. thing we need to do more well, Especially of. a pastor yeah. and his wife, because right. you're, you're always dedicating yourselves <coughs> to other people. Right. And you need to have that Our time last, alone. Our last so. vacation, we had several issues occurring at the church, and I was on my cell phone calling people and then mm -hmm. comforting them then and, and putting out uh, broadcasts through our prayer network and all to get everybody to pray for certain needs. So, you know, it's... Uh, um, it's, it's a continual, it's a calling, it's not a profession, it's a calling. When you asked her to marry you, were you a preacher? No, no, no I was Did a deputy she, sheriff okay, for Scott County. Okay, so yeah. she had no idea what she was going to get into, other than the love of her life had proposed, and that was cool. Later, when you said, the Lord wants me to do this, did she handle it well? Well, I'll let her tell that. I, th I think I, <laughs> I think did. I don't so. remember any problems. Well, Although her uncle. When, when Travis mm -hmm. and I started dating, he really was not in church. He was a deputy sheriff. He really he, wasn't saved, in other words. Yeah, <laughs> okay, that's right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he was a deputy sheriff, and he worked <laughs> a lot of weekends and odd hours and uh -huh. everything. But my dad is a very strong man. <laughs> And he said, if you, Hello, Louis. he had the, yeah, <laughs> it was his philosophy, if you go out with my daughter on Sunday afternoon, you come to church on Sunday morning. That's a good idea, Daddy. <laughs> so that's how Travis got in church. Yeah, more, yeah, more or less, that's right. That's pretty good, that's pretty good. Yeah. Now, the other day, y'all were sitting in Forsyth County when you saw Emory Samples here on the show. Right. Mm -hmm. And it tickled you to death because it we did. talked about your granddaddy. Right. Now, can we tell folks your connection with the Samples family? Well, um, the Samples family, until until right about the time of he Haw, lived on the road that goes down to Lanier Beach South. I don't know if you're familiar mm -hmm. with that road or not, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but um, it's Lanier Beach South Road now, but it was not that at the time. It didn't have a name, just a dirt road. And that's the community I grew up in. Uh -huh. And my grandfather was Joe Hansard, and he had a little store. And at that time, it was the only store on Buford Dam Road, mm -hmm. and he sold bait. and minnows and you know live minnows and all that and so it was kind of the place to sit by the wood burning stove and talk and junior did that a lot uh -huh. and so i grew up with them and knowing their family and everything you know i always grew up thinking they were minners yeah, yeah right yeah. My dad <laughs> when said, i was a little girl it was so i yeah. thought it was fun to do that job at the uh -huh. store to catch uh -huh. the minnows and and uh, put them in a little bowl and and sell them, but uh -huh. it was fun. <laughs> well, and you told me that on that It's Your Life that they talk about your grandfather. Well, he was on, my, my, they flew my grandmother and grandfather uh -huh. out there. Uh -huh. In Hollywood. Uh -huh. Yeah. And Ralph Emery. What was that, that was like a big deal. Them? Yeah. <laughs> well, they'd never been on a plane. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And um, they'd been to Florida and to Cherokee, North Carolina. Whoa, you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. They'd never been on a plane. Wow. And they flew them out there, and they saw all the things that Emory that's what tickled me because I, it brought back so many memories and uh -huh. my grandparents coming back telling us about seeing the, you know, the Chinese theater and all the things uh -huh. that he said they saw that yeah. um, my grandparents were with them. 
That is so But nice. my grandfather had a sawmill, and Junior worked for him at the sawmill. Okay. Now, both grandparents gone now? They are. Okay. Mm -hmm. A lot of good yeah. memories? Yeah, a lot, many good memories. Yeah. It's like you talked about how Forsyth County used to be. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I don't think progress is good. Yes, I agree with and you. And the yeah. Chamber of Commerce wouldn't agree with me no. on that. <laughs> they want more and more business to come in, but mm -hmm. we had a very simple life. And hardly anybody had any money, mm -hmm. you know, but we didn't know that we didn't have any money. Right. It was just life, and that's right. how we lived. Yeah. And um, so we, Roanoke Baptist Church was the center of the community, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a good life. That's where those people in Kentucky probably live right. too. They don't and and I, think, right. I think it's a good thing, and I, I'm so glad we did this trip because it really opened your eyes to these people are happy. They're sitting on their porch. Now, it is funny because quite a few of the trails we went down, we would be going down it, then we'd dead end, have to turn around and come back. And I know the people sitting on the porch thought, well, those idiots are going to go down there and dead end to those dirt road and have to come out. <laughs> and they'd wave at us, coming and go. And, yeah, and yeah, we did. But um, they seemed very content and very happy. And I thought it reminds me of Forsyth County, Georgia, many years ago. Right. So. Right. Well, there was just a, one or two restaurants in town. Mm -hmm. And some weeks we would have money to go to town and go to the Dairy Queen or whatever. Some weeks we didn't. Uh -huh. We would just ask Daddy, and that's life. do we have enough money to get a hot dog? And he'd look in his wallet. You know, my dad's never put things on credit cards or anything uh -huh. like that. So if we had money, we could go to town. If we didn't, we didn't go. Right. The tasty freeze. You know? Right. Yeah, we had <laughs> the Dairy Queen and the, the tasty, tasty freeze. freeze. Yeah. Wow. They would take you back to the lake and say, well, so-and-so's farm was right down there under, oh, yeah. under the water, of course. Uh -huh. So-and-so yeah. lived mm -hmm. over there. Right. Well, I don't want to take too much time, but an interesting <laughs> story about that. My grand when they built the lake, when they built the dam, and before they flooded the lake, they put a certain amount of water in it. I don't remember how many feet, but my grandfather built um, flat bottom boats, just a flat boat, and they floated on those and cut the trees and everything off at that level. And so my grandfather was a part of that. And when they got everything cut off, you know, they left things there when they flooded they, they the lake. They houses down oh, there, yeah. actually, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. homes. Yeah, yeah and so. Way, yeah. And that's why they say if you're scuba diving, it's very dangerous like to scuba dive in. Right. Because of entanglement and, you know. Mm -hmm. the, Most of your core of engineering lakes are. Yeah. Because yeah. of that reason. It's very well, dangerous. and the bottom is not level. You can go off and it's you're in shallow water and all of a sudden you mm -hmm. step off and you're mm -hmm. over your head. Yeah. Yeah. And that happens a lot when the people drown. They mm -hmm. don't realize what's under their feet and they, they have take a step in the wrong direction. Now, have y'all ever been to Hurricane Mills, Tennessee? To Loretta Lynn's home no. place? No. Okay, where no. she lives now. Mm -hmm. We're gonna take you on a quick trip. This is one of my suggestions for a day trip. It's about three and a half hours from Jasper. So if you are planning, maybe leave on Friday afternoon, go up and spend the night. We have front row seats to the Memorial Day weekend show. I'm excited wow. about that. And, and you just go up there, and spend the night because <laughs> <laughs> it is it is so beautiful. It is where you can spend a day. Now this is Loretta Lynn on stage with her son, and that's part of the group there. This is who we will be seeing. We've never had front row seats. I'm just nearly excited to death to get to see. That's one of her daughters, and her yeah. granddaughters also <coughs> perform there. Now she has one granddaughter who does a little bit of a rock and roll. And uh, Granny's trying to get that out of her, and Loretta says quite often, girl, you need to be singing country music. <laughs> so, but there's Miss Loretta. The night we were there, there's Sissy. Now, Sissy owns Sissy's Country Store, which is right at the entry to, when you go into Hurricane Mills, on the right is Sissy's Little Country Store, and she has music there after the singing. There's Sissy and her mom, and if you remember the movie Coal Miner's Daughter, Sissy was the little blonde-headed girl in the kitchen when they were doing the cannon and sitting around the table, and there's Miss Sissy now. Her other daughter has a flea market right down the street. So Hurricane Mills is kind of run by the Lynn family. And um, there's her daughters, Patsy and Peggy, the twins, that one was named after Miss Patsy Klein, who was her best friend and died uh, while she was pregnant with those twins. So there you go. They sing a little bit different style of music. It's a little bit country. It's a little bit... Um, a little bit country rock, maybe, you know, not quite my style. I think there's a song in that. I a little think bit country, a little bit rock and yeah, roll. Yeah, I, I think there might be a song in that. 
There's her son, Ernest Ray, who has a little bit of a control problem. And there's Miss Karen Jordan, and there's Eddie and Loretta. That was our trip last September. We had a great, great trip, and it is something y'all can do in a day trip. Now, it's very tiring. You have to find somebody who likes to drive, and that man right there, happy birthday to you, loves to drive. And uh, thank goodness he does, because we always get home late, late at night. Are you a backseat driver? No, I'm not, because no, I no. trust, I've never been with anybody who drove like this man drives. He's so consistent, he's so dead on perfect. I, I just sit back and watch him and think, how does, he's, he has no nerve problem with driving. If you drive with a whole bunch of kids There's in the back Cece's of the bus, store. you can drive anything. Yeah, you can drive anything. <laughs> there, there you go. But plan a trip to Hurricane Mills. First of all, go to Butcher Holler, so you will understand where this woman came from. Mm. And I don't suggest you do it the same weekend, because we did it, and that is tough. Don't go from Eastern Kentucky to Western Kentucky. I have to say, we got to spend Saturday evening with my beautiful granddaughter, Victoria. We spent some time with her. Um, she's going to college up in Kentucky. And I said, Tori, the difference in Eastern Kentucky and Western Kentucky is like night and day. Because when you get over to Western Kentucky, the big farms and the horses and the mansions and and the acres and acres and acres of that gorgeous blue grass. And when you're in Eastern Kentucky, it's rocks and dirt and yeah. poverty. So very, very different. But but it's a trip well worth making, and I'd never done it before. So um, an interesting, interesting weekend. And it's it's what I will call one of my favorite day trips. It was a lot of fun. It's kind of like crossing the border over a, a state line in Alabama. Huh? It was. It's kind of <laughs> like going to Alabama. Sorry. Speaking of, let's Just talk kidding. about let's talk about <laughs> Alabama. There's going to be a fishing tournament in Alabama soon, but there's also something else going on in Alabama. If y'all haven't been, have you ever been to Trade Day in Alabama? No. Okay, we've got Freddie on the line. Oh, we've done, done a lot, lot have we? We've done a lot, have we? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mr. Brackett. Oh. Hey. Hey, Freddie Brackett. What you doing? Hey, Freddie. Hey, Freddie. <laughs> hey. hey. I just want. I just wanted to call and, and thank you for having the Bridgemans on and t tell the Bridgemans thank you so much. I know they probably can't hear me, but thank them Thank you, for thank you, thank you, thank you for his best friend. Oh, well. Oh, okay. well, you're welcome. <laughs> well, they, they did it without one single hesitation, so happy, happy birthday Oh, ain't to that you. sweet. Happy birthday. <laughs> um, it has been a fun year. Y'all have been a big part of this year for us. You have prayed for us. You have prayed about our travels. You have done a lot to minister to me personally. I thank you very, very much because um, the two of you, I think, make people want to be like you. You're very, very special, and you're very Sweet. special, very special couple. So thank, thank you very you much for today. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you thank you, thank you, Mr. Brackett. She puts you on the same level with this guy. So. <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> <I'm not. laughs> That's right. Okay. You know what I did yesterday? I, last night at 7 o'clock, Joel Osteen did a special, and it was his big Easter gala and yada, yada, yada. And I told everybody on Facebook to watch. Ask me if I remembered to watch. <laughs> I hope it's going to be rebroadcast because everybody needs a positive message. Together, you bring a positive message to your church family. You have a great church family, and we want to invite people to come and visit with y'all. Antioch is, what, 35, 40 minutes from here? Well, from uh, Jasper. From Jasper. From here, it's about an hour, isn't right. it? Right. Right, about an hour. How would you go to your church from here? Do y'all come across through Dawsonville? Uh, we come up 515 from Ball Ground. Okay. Up that way. Okay, so you go. Of course, that you way. could go, you know, from Jasper or go out from LAJ down 52 mm -hmm. and through Dawsonville and come That's down That's the way I've gone several times. Mm -hmm. Or go Old Highway 9, go that way. Right. Go okay. Come that way. Yeah. Scenic route. Yeah, right. yeah. It's beautiful. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. And do a day trip, y'all. Go out and visit a little country church. Would you classify how old is your church? Well, it's almost in 1911. Okay. And. You almost you've been 100 there? years old. Well, almost 100 years. <laughs> Did you see them gray hair? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> almost 100 years old. That's right, amazing. That's right, that's right. Yeah, it was a Baptist church. Next it was a Methodist church before that. So there's been a church there Since for over 100 years. 1836, I believe. Oh, wow. a church somewhere wow. on that site, right? And so. the preachers before you, how did you end up? Were they there a long time? Well, it, it, some would stay just a few years, but some, like her, her grandfather, was uh -huh. the pastor there for 14 years. Uh -huh. And we had another that came that was there in two different times for a total of about 18 years, I think. So, uh -huh. But no, the, on average, two or three years probably. Well, our pastor just before Travis was Dr. Marlon Thomas, and he was there for two years. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I enjoyed it last time I was there. I mean, he actually preached a good sermon. It was oh, on the yeah. 14 loaves and 35 fishes. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that one. Well, the thing that I enjoyed most about 
Mark showing up there. They've got a great <coughs> fellowship hall downstairs. You've we got do. a great fellowship hall. We're and, thankful and, for that. Yeah, and there's a wonderful spirit there, and people enjoy doing for the community. So we want to invite people to come. It's Antioch Baptist Church. Okay. What's the address? Uh, 2465 Antioch Road in Cumming, Georgia. Uh, again, it's Georgia 400, exit 16 to Antioch Road, and you can see the church sign on the right. And truly, you are welcome there. You know. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 that is the cool thing. When you get there, folks will be there to greet you. Our website is welcome to Antioch. <coughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's and they right. sing good songs over there, too. They sing great <laughs> songs. And how many times have y'all been there? Uh, once or twice. Uh, no, I've been there two or three times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. Head first out and city there. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's right. Well, a, a great church and a great spirit. Right now, we're going to go to some more photos. This is of Cades Cove. I've oh, suggested nice. day trips. Beautiful. Now, until. Yes. A year and a half ago, I had never seen Cades Cove. I'm almost ashamed to tell that, but we're going to go to some photos of Cades Cove. And it is one of those things. That's primitive it's there, only, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. what is it, Bill? Three hours from here? Uh, three and a half. And I yeah. had never been there. Mm -hmm. So, y'all, take lessons from me. I just didn't get out and do stuff much. And now I've been encouraged, and we just take these little day trips, and it's been so much fun and so many memories. And that's what life is about, creating memories for yourself and the people you love. Right. We're going to go to some photos of Cades Cove. I'm not sure how many are on here, but Cades Cove is one of those things that's beautiful in the spring, it's beautiful in the summer. In the summer, I suggest you take a lunch and something to drink. And because a snack you, or two. Yes, mm -hmm. because yeah. you will get stuck in traffic and you will be sitting there saying, why don't they go? Yeah, and right now, instead of going to Cades Cove, we are going to go to the Singing in the Mountains. That's one of the first places that Freddie Brackett drove the motorhome. We pulled the motorhome up there to the door, and uh, Pat Towns, I think there were over 900 people there. It was a great day. There's my buddy Rich Scott, and yeah, there's actually, my buddy Bill Senior. Actually had Angela. me crying up there. <laughs> that is a great opportunity, and it is coming up very soon. See, I love that, Bill. That was so cute. <laughs> singing in the Mountains will feature so many great groups. I didn't know you were singing that yeah, night. I must have yeah, missed that. Yeah, I was singing that <laughs> You were belting out some right. Lynn stuff there. There's Angela. This is before we knew this child had cancer. Um, it is amazing to see the photos of her then she is beginning to look like that again now she really hit the bottom but she's beginning to look much much better much much healthier and we thank god for that there's our buddy rich scott and don't forget trading time follows us every day monday through friday at 10 a.m and then again live at 5 p.m and y'all start calling him and giving him some ideas of what you've got for sale because there's so many things you can get rid of with spring cleaning. There's my baby Bill Senior. You got a halo over me, see that? Yeah, I see that halo. <laughs> uh, I saw those horns over me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This has been an amazing year. Um, thank you to each and every one of you. A special, special thank you to Freddie Brackett and all the fun we've had. We've had some great travels. We have now traveled over 19,000 miles. Now, when you think about it, to work five days a week and be here on time every time and still cover 19,000 miles. There are the turkeys at Cades Cove. It takes one special man to keep me grounded, keep me focused, and keep me in sights because sometimes I sidetrack. <laughs> so, but uh, there you go. There are the turkeys at Cades Cove. Y'all plan a trip and go up there. It is absolutely gorgeous. You got turkey as big as deer up there. And it's something I had never done three and a half hours from home. So we want to encourage you. Um, gas prices are up a little bit, but we didn't notice maybe $20 worth of difference in what we spent this weekend versus what we would have spent a year ago. The gas is up some, but not, not too terribly. Isn't it absolutely gorgeous? And mm. that's three and a half hours from here. So an easy, easy trip and something that anybody can do. Load up a bunch of your buddies and go, but don't forget if you go during the peak months, take yourself a snack, take yourself something to drink because you're going to be sitting in traffic a lot. A lot of times and yeah. people just sometimes will just stop. Especially from Florida. And wait Florida. on the animals. Yeah. But yeah, that's a that's you a Florida lots of you're a Florida front of you. tag, you know, you get behind them, you're in trouble. You might want to try to get around them. Did you go in the little church churches there? We, on the we went in the churches mm -hmm. when I went up there with the Barker brothers. We actually took pictures in there of some people singing in one of the churches. And this was a group of Mennonites from Ohio who came down and were standing there singing in that little church. About 12 of them singing a cappella. It was beautiful. Did they bring the Ladyites with them? No, they didn't. They just brought them in. Just the Mennonites. <laughs> <laughs> now today we're going to end with a thing called making memories. Uh, we have made a lot of memories together and I, can, I hope we continue to make memories. Where will y'all be Thank singing you. in the near future? This Friday night we'll be at the Meadow Baptist Church in Lawrenceville okay. uh, at uh, 630. Um, it's on Georgia 20, just past the Mall of Georgia. Mm -hmm. It'll be the uh, Meadow Gospel Sing. They're going to have a Southern Gospel Singing 
and uh, they've invited us and New City Quartet, I think, will be there and, and Mark and Andrea Forrester from Michigan. Uh -huh. So we're, we're excited about that opportunity. Good, good. And, um, and to check out your website, what's your website? www.thebridgemans.com. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. All right, well, time flies when you're having front fun. Right now, I'm going to show you how I've had so much fun in the past year. Happy birthday, Fred Allen Brackett. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Miss Loretta, for uh, raising a really, really good guy. That's good guy. Right. Hey, Happy hey, birthday man. to you. We're going to go to Making Memories, and then when we close today, I think the three of y'all are going to sing a little birthday something for you. So we'll go to we Making are? Memories right hey. now. Okay. I was looking at some photographs just yesterday. A flash in time back when our love was new. sing to him and we decided because of copyright infringement yet what's what's a silly little birthday song you can sing to him that we won't get in trouble over we'll, we'll let the pastor sing it he's good <coughs> happy happy birthday we wish that you were here happy happy birthday you brought sherry so much cheer i love you thank you both <laughs> You made my shopping so easy. I didn't have to go to Belk's. I didn't have to go anywhere. And you're within my budget. So <laughs> thank you very much for being here today. We yeah. want to encourage you to do something, just a little something special, you know, and create memories. Right. We have learned in the past year, it's fun to just get out and go take those little pig trails. Well, one of the pig trails I took was where you used to live. Really? And, and it was just a view of something that I'd never seen. And I used to make fun of him for driving that far every day. And then I went up there and I saw this view. amazing view. And yeah. I said, well, no wonder, you know. So don't pass the little things headed to the big things, you know. Well, that's stop, true. Yeah, yep. stop yeah. and just spend an opportunity. And then you, can be like, then you can be like Bob Hope and sing, thanks for the memories. That's right. That's How's right. the rest of that go? I don't know. Now, I'm going to encourage you to watch <laughs> Coal Miner's Daughter. It is an awesome <laughs> movie about an awesome young woman who truly did um, turn her life around because the little Lynn said, hey, let's get out of this holler, and they did. From North Georgia now today, we're not getting out of anywhere. We'll be with you again Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 10 a.m., 6 to 7.30 p.m., 1 to 2.30 a.m. Happy birthday, Freddie Brackett. You got something to say, Bill Happy Senior? Happy birthday, Mr. Uh, Freddie. Happy birthday. From North Georgia now today, we will see you again only on ETC3. You be here, and we'll be here, too. What can I say?